asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. I'm taking a picture and calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. Excuse me? Thank you. If I had to take a guess, I would say she's probably going to vote for Joe Biden this election in the general. That, am I stereotyping? A little bit. But the only reason I'm, I'm using this example as a stereotype is because y'all have stereotyped racists as these people who just walk around with Nazi symbols on their forehead and MAGA hats. Like, and that's it. If they're not like this, then they're probably not. And if they're, they're not racist, if they don't do this stuff, that they don't vote for Trump, if they don't wear MAGA hats, then they're not, especially if they're a Democrat, they can't be racist if they're Democrats, people. But I would almost, I could almost venture to say that there are almost as many racists on the left as there are on the right. The left has just gotten really, really good at pretending that they're not racist. Glory, what's up? Malcolm X told us about these liberal foxes ages ago, 100%. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is, almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling and taking for a friend. Hundred percent. Malcolm X told us. Martin Luther King told us. They were warning us. It's not. She felt like she could get away with it because people get away with it all the time. White people, white women specifically. This is a culture. Why do you think that white women call the police every time there's a problem, even when there's not really one? And black people spend most of their time avoiding the police, even if, they're, even if they haven't done anything wrong. I walk in the opposite direction. I walk on the other side of the street. My friends do the same. Whenever you're a black person in front of a cop, you literally feel guilty of doing nothing. Like, you don't even know what you're doing. Like, man, let me... Hold up, I don't got anything on me, do I? I'm not jaywalking, am I? This is like a visceral reaction. Black Lives Matter doesn't invite the cops to their protests. Women's March, ran by white women, invites cops to their protests. I know because I interviewed one. A cop, I mean. And he was kind of confused. He was like, I mean, this is a protest, but we were paid a lot of money to be here. So I'm not really sure what the details were, but that's why we're here. We can't pretend like these people don't exist. We can't pretend like it's a one-sided issue, like it's, it's a left or a right issue. Because why do you think that a lot, like you, y'all, some people, progressives specifically, don't even recognize when they're like their favorite journalists, their favorite leadership. 
is engaging in passive aggressive racism all the time, which is the majority of the progressive movement. They'll try and crush people using racist dog whistles, engaging in pseudo racist tactics. And if you believe in their words and some of the stuff that they say, then you've probably got, you've, you've probably deified them to the point where you're not paying attention to the details, which is the devil is always in the details, especially when you're dealing with manipulators and social climbers. The world of academia is inherently racist. Or excuse me, I'll say, I'm not going to say it's racist, but it has a lot of implicit racial bias that is never discussed. And we're never going to really address it because it's never discussed. For example, I went to University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I mean, it's this amazing school. Like, would never probably go anywhere else for my undergrad. But with that being said, you start to notice a pattern. Black people are held to a different standard. Black men are held to a different standard because who is grading the papers? Uh, there's not a lot of black people that go into academia, people. When we go to college, our parents send us to college to get a goddamn J-O-B. You go into college to become a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, or for sports. You ain't got time to be playing around with these art majors. You ain't got time to be going to get your PhD. Who got PhD money? As my mother would say. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you're going to college because you likely have generations of family that are leaning on you for support. Whether or not, I mean, if you're black, Latino, same thing. You very rarely see Latinos and black people, uh, Arabs, Desi, like you, maybe not so much Desi, but you just don't see it because we ain't got time to be playing with masters and PhDs for a non-guaranteed job and going into debt. So who do you see in the PhD programs and the master's programs? White people. Okay. Who are teaching assistants? White people. Who grade papers? White people.